Hello and welcome to Vikas Biologist. In this channel, you will come across videos on various biology topics that will be helpful for your exam preparation. Hi, I'm Dr. Vikas and in this video, I will be presenting before you a very important topic of carbohydrate metabolism that is glycolysis. In this video, we will be learning about what is glycolysis, what is history of glycolysis. We will try to understand the process of glycolysis, the energy steps that are involved in the process of glycolysis, the regulation of glycolysis and significance of glycolysis. So be with me until the end of the video to understand completely about glycolysis. Let us start. What is glycolysis? Glycolysis literally means breakdown of sugars. It is the first step in the breakdown of the glucose to extract energy for cellular metabolism. It is a catabolic process. That means one hexose such as glucose, which is a six carbon carbohydrate is oxidized and broken down into two triose molecules such as pyruvate, which is a three carbon carbohydrate. You can just look at this following diagram, which shows the glucose conversion to pyruvate in the glycolysis process. It is a 10 step catalytic pathway, which involves 10 different enzymes. Glucose is the most abundant hexose in the nature and it is the one typically associated with glycolysis. On the other hand, fructose is metabolized in the cell and galactose can easily be converted into glucose for catabolism in the pathway as well. Let us see where and how does glycolysis takes place. Glycolysis occurs in the cytosol of the cell, that means in the cytoplasm, and hence it is called as cytoplasmic pathway. It is a metabolic pathway which results in generation of ATP, and hence it is called as the energy generating pathway. It takes place without the use of oxygen, and hence it is anaerobic but can also occur in presence of oxygen as well. So glycolysis is aerobic as well as anaerobic. Now, if you look into the history of glycolysis, we will see that the glycolysis was discovered by the combined effort of Gustav Emden, Otto Meyerhoff, Jakub Karol Parnas. Hence the name emden meyerhoff parnas pathway has come into existence. This glycolysis pathway is also called as EMP pathway or EM pathway. It is also named as pyruvic acid cycle because pyruvic acid is the end product of the glycolysis pathway. It is also named as the first process in cellular respiration. Let us look into the process of glycolysis, how the glycolysis process takes on. If you look into the glycolysis, it includes two phases. The glycolysis first have the preparatory phase, which is the investment phase, and the next phase is the payoff phase. The preparatory phase or investment phase is so-called because energy in the form of ATP is utilized here. We see that two ATP are utilized in the preparatory phase. When you look at the payoff phase, we find that ATP and NADH molecules are generated. Altogether, four ATP and two NADH are generated in this phase, hence it is called as payoff phase. We will look into each phase in detail to understand glycolysis. The diagram here shows the preparatory phase. It begins with the glucose. Glucose in presence of the hexokinase enzyme 
which is a first priming reaction, converts glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. In this process, ATP is converted to ADP and hence it is a first priming reaction where ATP is utilized. Next step, glucose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 6-phosphate in presence of the enzyme phosphohexose isomerase. This is a isomerization step. In the next step, fructose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 1,6-biphosphate in presence of the enzyme phosphofructokinase 1. This is a second priming reaction involving ATP conversion to ADP. So this is the second step where ATP is utilized. Fructose 1,6-biphosphate is converted to two molecules. One is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and other one is the dihydroxyacetone phosphate in presence of the enzyme aldolase. Here, cleavage of the 6-carbon sugar phosphate to two 3-carbon sugar phosphates is taking place. So you get two molecules. One is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and the other one is the dihydroxyacetone phosphate. In the next step, which is a isomerization step, dihydroxyacetone phosphate is converted back to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate in presence of triose phosphate isomerase. This is the preparatory phase. After this, the glycolysis enters into the payoff phase, which begins with glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So you remember in the preparatory phase, now you have two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. This glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate undergoes oxidation and phosphorylation in presence of the enzyme glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, where NADH is produced. 1,3-biphosphoglycerate that is formed during this reaction is now converted to 2-phosphoglycerate, which involves the production of ATP. This is the step where the first ATP forms, and hence this is referred as substrate-level phosphorylation. The 3 phosphoglycerate which is formed in the reaction is now moving ahead to give you 2 phosphoglycerate in presence of the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase. 2 phosphoglycerate that is formed in this reaction is moving ahead to give you phosphoenol pyruvate with the elimination of the water. This is because of the enzyme enolase. The final step of the glycolysis is formation of the pyruvate from phosphoenol pyruvate. This is the second ATP forming reaction and hence we call it as a substrate level phosphorylation which occurs in presence of the enzyme pyruvate kinase and ATP is synthesized in this reaction. So you can see very clearly in the preparatory phase, ATP was utilized and in the payoff stage, ATP is being generated. The entire reaction can also be understood by this flowchart where you can see the glucose is converted to dihydroxyacetone phosphate followed by glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate in the preparatory phase, right? So very clearly here, the diagram shows two ATP utilization in the preparatory phase followed by four ATP generation and two NADH generation in the payoff stage. When you look at the energy steps carefully, what we understand is in the preparatory phase, step one and step three utilizes ATP. A total of two ATP utilization per glucose occurs in the preparatory phase. In the payoff stage, what we see is step six involves two NADH production per glucose. Step seven, two ATP are produced. Step eight is a blank step where nothing is being produced. Step nine involves one water molecule production. Step 10, 
two ATP is been produced. So altogether, this diagram shows the preparatory phase utilization of two ATP and payoff generation of two NADH and four ATP. So remember, net glycolysis reaction, you are going to get two NADH and two ATP. This is the total net glycolysis energy. If you look into the regulation step of the glycolysis, what you see is the glycolysis step is regulated by enzymes present at the step one, three, and 10. The enzymes are hexokinase, phosphofructokinase, and pyruvate kinase. These are the enzymes which are regulating the glycolysis process under the influence of activators like AMP ADP for hexokinase, AMP ADP as well as fructose 2 6 biphosphate for fructo phosphofructokinase, AMP ADP fructose 1 6 biphosphate for pyruvate kinase. On the other hand, there are inhibitors like glucose 6 phosphate, which inhibits hexokinase, ATP and citrate is inhibiting phosphofructokinase, ATP, estyl CoA, and alanine is inhibiting pyruvate kinase. So in this way, glycolysis pathway is being regulated. Let us look into significance of glycolysis, why it is so important. It is very important because it is employed by all the tissues for the breakdown of glucose to provide energy in the form of ATP. It is important pathway for production of energy especially under anaerobic conditions. It is crucial for generation of energy in which the, in, in, in the cells without mitochondria. It forms products that are intermediate for other metabolic pathway. So we see that glycolysis interfaces with the glycogen metabolism, the pentose phosphate pathway, the formation of amino groups, the triglyceride synthesis by means of glycerol 3 phosphate, the production of lactate, and transamination with alanine. So, all this process interface with the glycolysis. Is there any disease association with glycolysis? Yes. If you look into the enzyme pyruvate kinase, the deficiency is an autosomal recessive disorder that causes hemolytic anemia. There is an inability to form ATP and cell damage occurs during this disorder. Cells become swollen and are taken up by the spleen causing splenomegaly. The signs and symptoms include jaundice, ictrius, elevated bilirubin and splenomegaly. Arsenic poison also prevents ATP synthesis because Arsenic takes the place of phosphate in the steps of glycolysis. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you have liked it. If you have liked it, please subscribe and share it. I will be coming up with more videos in the coming times. Thanks once again.